Now we'll do a meditation on looking at our own ignorance, and we do this with a background awareness that any mistakes in our thinking, any faults in our reasoning, anything innate, anything intellectually acquired that is not in alignment with the truth of reality is not our fault and is not us. So then we can do a very aggressive examination without feeling like it's an act of self-harm without correctly understanding what exactly we're ignorant of, particularly related to the self, we're never going to uproot these really destructive patterns that we have that perpetuate samsara as well as everyday life suffering. So here we go. Nice straight back. Really settle into the posture. Feel the safety of your room and the safety of your own body and the stability of your spine. And now revive your motivation. Bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment, or something more secular, but still altruistic. I'm looking into the nature of ignorance in order to understand the source of suffering. Through this examination, may I cultivate a deep wisdom that understands the actual relationship between myself and others. May I start to pierce through the illusion of separateness and come to understand infinite interconnection May I come to understand the emptiness of inherent existence as like space for infinite possibilities to arise within. And may all of this wisdom lead to cutting the root of samsara, lead to breaking the pattern of negative habitual tendencies those things that are destructive to both myself and others. And allow that motivation to settle in. You can simplify it as just method and wisdom. May they increase.
And now shift your focus to the breath. And now shift to analysis. We already know what it's like to see something with our actual eyes for it to seem a certain way. But for our mind to understand that what we're seeing is not what is true. Just as if we were driving and we saw water in the distance on the road, for a moment we might consider, is it really water or is it a mirage? As an adult we have experience with mirages, so we don't jump to assumptions because of our wisdom. We know the difference between a mistaken appearance and a wrong understanding of it. We already know what it's like to see something with healthy eyes or to hear something that has not been distorted, to touch something and know what it is. And we also know that there can be distortions. There can be distortions that come from our physicality, from illnesses, from disabilities, that can make something so simple and obvious, like a white conch, appear an entirely different color. Really sit with the fact that you already know this. Something can be one way, but appear entirely other. Or there can be a fault in our perception.
Think about how very clearly, when we look in the mirror, another face appears, a reflection of our own face. And it does look like there are two faces, the one that we have and the one that we see. There's the impression of two. Not for a second do we believe that there are two faces, unless we are a child or an animal, or startled, caught off guard, walk by a window or a mirror we didn't know was there. We've trained ourselves without realizing it. We've accustomized ourselves through time and experience that when we look and there's something reflected, it doesn't mean there's something inside the reflection that is the same as what is reflected. We understand how reflections work. We can stare at our face and another face stares back. But we know that just because it seems that way, there isn't a separate figure there looking back at us. We already know how reflections work related to mirrors, and then we infer that must be how it is for windows. And then we go for a hike outside, and we see the beautiful moon reflected off the water. And because of our previous understanding about reflections, we know there aren't suddenly two moons. We already know better, no problem. We can just enjoy the reflection without belief in the illusion. So we use this simple example of what it is to see something unreal, conventionally, as opposed to believing it. We can see the two moons and not believe two moons. We can see reflection of our face and not believe two faces. And we can use this worldly wisdom for things like overcoming prejudice. We can see separate continents. We can draw separate boundaries and still not believe that there is essential separateness. We can observe differences in climate, differences in culture, in language, in expression. And yet we can take our wisdom further and look deeply at the fact that all beings with life simply want happiness and not to suffer. So the fact that appearance is different doesn't need to confuse us anymore. We can tap into the sameness or the equality.
But our ignorance does more than just make us believe the unreal. Our ignorance does more than let us fall into prejudices and discriminations. Ignorance does this, but innate ignorance does even more and fuels everything else. Ignorance is why we believe the appearance of inherent existence. The seeming, the impression we have, the problem in our vision, not just the vision of our eyes, not just the surface opinions we hold. Ignorance gives us a concrete sense of self. So we use these easier examples to go more deeply. Ask yourself, is there a way to start looking at the illusion or the lie that we tell ourselves? What is the problem in your story of self? How does it create and reinforce divisions? How does it fuel all of your grasping and craving? Your aversion, annoyance, and discomfort? Your confusion, disassociation, overwhelm? Try and see through your own illusion, starting with your own I, your own self, me. You can even say your own name to yourself, hear it ring, and then find the fact that you can't find that name, that self. Not specifically. There is a self and a name, but not located any one place specifically. No concrete core. So first try to find the way it seems that way, that there is a concreteness, and then talk yourself through the delusion and try and let it go, even just a little. Keep looking for that deepest ignorance. We won't be able to find it experientially for a while, but peel through more layers than you have before. Move from your understanding of the unreal in the conventional to the unreal in terms of your own opinions to the unreal in terms of actual reality. Inherent existence is not true. That's not the way things are. 
especially and in particular for ourselves. It's important to see this. So do a deep dive into your own ignorance. Find more of it so you can uproot it. And now dedicate. Janju Sancho Rinpoche, Make Panam Kiyuchi, Kevan Yamba Me Pai, Gone Gondu Pawa Show, Tony Dawa Rinpoche, Make Panam Kiyuchi, Kevan Yamba Me Pai. Gone, gone, do power show. May the wisdom of bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness unite and increase. May we carry whatever insights we've come to off of the cushion and into our life. And you can relax your attention. Okay, see you next time.